Many low stakes players view bets in terms of absolute sizes as opposed to viewing them in relation to the pot. This is a problem. Here's a scenario you've probably seen at many live 1-2 games. A 5-way limped pot is checked around on the flop. This means after the rake, there's $9 in the pot. The turn brings a flush draw and somebody bets 10. Many players, hopefully not you, are happy to call here with any bare flush draw because it's only 10 bucks. Anyone with a fundamental understanding of pot odds should understand that this is a costly error regardless of how small the bet size seems to be. To demonstrate the error in judgment here, simply reimagine the scenario with larger bet sizes and larger pot sizes while keeping the ratios the same. In this situation, when the same player is on the turn with a weak flush draw, they snap full, facing a $100 bet into a $90 pot. When the bet was 10, they gladly flick it in. Here's why low stakes games are ripe for this mistake. There are far more limped pots in low stakes games, and people don't like betting tiny dollar amounts, even if the pot itself is small. As a result, you'll see people bet and call small dollar amounts that are actually quite large relative to the pot, and this isn't just relegated to drawing hands on the flop return. Many times this mistake will persist all the way to the river. Let's examine how people play multi-way limped pots. First, there's very little bluffing, either because the juice is not worth the squeeze, or because players know their opponents too often call small bets, the ones discussed in this lesson, for their bluffs to get through. Secondly, people are reluctant to protect their hands in these pots by betting, since there isn't much of a pot to protect. Eventually, these pots get checked around until the river, when someone inevitably bets full pot with their top or second pair, only to get called by third or fourth pair. Once again, it's a safe assumption those players would not make those calls if the pot and bet size were much larger. So now that we understand what this mistake is, let's look at some of the ways you can avoid making it, as well as how you can capitalize against your opponents who do. 1. Be involved in fewer limped pots. If you are frequently facing $10 or $20 pot size bets, then you are probably doing too much preflop limping. 2. Always ask yourself what you would do if the pot and bet sizes were both 5 to 10 times larger. If you wouldn't call a $75 bet into a $75 pot, then you should probably not call a $15 bet into a $15 pot. If one is a mistake, then they both are, and they will add up over time. 3. Take advantage of your opponent's calling tendencies with your value hands. Because many players in these small pots only care about absolute bet size, they are probably going to call 15 just as easy as they'll call 10. Exploit this weakness by consistently sizing up your value bets in small pots. 4. Don't bluff in small pots. This is a logical progression from the previous point. If your opponents are calling pot size bets too frequently, it does not incentivize you to bluff at them. 5. Don't call light against small bets that are actually large in relation to the pot. Besides the fact that the math of the call should make you tighten up as the pot odds are poor, you should recognize that your opponents are heavily weighted towards having it when they make these bets. They are usually betting the size of the pot simply because it seems unnatural to bet less.